Greetings, brethren. It is I, the Habsburger Donkey, and it's been mail day today. I've gotten all sorts of stuff. Uh, first of all, I've gotten two cans of lead belcher spray uh, because this went out of um, production with Games Workshop, and I think this was already back in uh, January that they uh, that they discontinued it, and uh, I managed to snag two bottles from a local. Um, from a local online store, and it took a while to get here, but at least I have two of these cans now, because it's probably... It's probably the best one that they made. I don't know why they discontinued it, but it is... Yeah, it's just really good. Anything that's supposed to be, you know, metal, like, especially when it comes to terrain, it's just great. And it, it's... Uh, it really helps not kill your brushes because, you know, metallic paints are really bad for brushes. So it just cuts down on, on, on that cost as well. It's, it's just a it's, it's just a good product. I don't know what they, why they discontinued it, but I have two more cans, so I'll be set for a while. I also like to use it for uh, uh, Dark Age miniatures that have a lot of chainmail because painting chainmail is the ultimate brush killer. Because not only are you painting metallic paints, you're also painting over an incredibly textured surface. So, very bad. Very bad for your brushes. So yeah, got this stuff. Great. But now, the main point, that's also the name of the video. I received this box. And it is massive. <laughs> the camera can't even get it all in. There you go, it's the American Civil War starter set. Uh, Warlord Games' new uh, project, the, the epic battle thing in smaller scale. And um, as you can see, even if I put it like this, it is a massive box. It's uh, This is going to be a very interesting video, because I'm, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to get all of this in, in shot. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it finally arrived. Uh, let me actually... I didn't get a, a knife. I'll just have to just have to rip it open. Um, they had some problems with the delivery, it seems. I, I think they wanted to release it at the end of um, February, and it, it took a few weeks more. But I'm actually just quite happy that I got this. Um, I pre-ordered it very, very early on. Um, I think it was actually the first weekend that it was available. Uh, because there was a, they also offered a sort of um, web store wide discount um, of I think it was twenty percent. It was like a special code that they emailed me, and uh, I was cheeky and tried to use it on this, and it worked. So, yeah, I got twenty percent off this um, and free shipping because it was pre uh, Brexit being official, and um, they used their new shipping thing, the UPS courier. Uh, uh, shipping, and I got that for free. So this was an unbelievable um, just bargain for me. So I'm 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 just in I'm just happy with it, <laughs> even even if I'm not too happy with some of the other stuff in the range. But we'll we'll talk about that afterwards. Um, all right. Oh yeah. I also I should show. I did also get a can it can it focus a war without hate blister. Which is nice, because I, I don't think I had one in my uh, mystery box, so I have one of this uh, this really cool diorama now myself. And the other thing I didn't really know is I also got the uh, special edition uh, Robert E. Lee and George Meade figures um, with the adjutants. I had no idea. I thought this was only in the big bundle that you got these um, sent with it. But apparently, just for pre-ordering the starter set, I got them as well. So that's great, because I can immediately also show you uh, the quality of the resin figures. Alright, let's open this box up. It is so large. Bloody hell. <laughs> Alright, so first of all, we have an absolute stack. Oh my gods, look at this. I'm gonna have to put the box out of the way. <laughs> This is getting crazy already. Urgh. Look at this stack of bases. This is just bases. That's crazy. Uh, well, I guess it makes sense because you need one of these per uh, infantry frame. And since, you know, there's a bunch of these frames in here, 
So I'm guessing, what was it, 12 per faction? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so there's 24 of these sprues with bases. <laughs> uh, it's just nuts. All right, I'm just going to put that aside because uh, I think we've seen these before. They are now green. They were uh, gray in the um, War Games Illustrated out edition. But uh, it doesn't really matter. They're just bases anyway. Right, and then we have the sprues. Uh, this is the one we already know from the War Games Illustrated. I think uh, they just added the gray ones there. And we also have them now in blue. Um, now, to anyone who doesn't uh, know yet, who didn't follow this from the beginning, uh, these sprues, this is the way, uh, these sprues are actually the same. So it, it doesn't matter that one is blue and the other is gray, it's the exact same sprue, they're just different colored plastic. So that means, um, let me show you the figures up close, if you haven't seen them before, there we go. So you can see some of them have kippies, some of them have hats. Uh, with my test frame from War Games Illustrated, I showed that you can trim down the, the hat brims and make them all look like they have kippies. But um, the blue sprue, as you can see, is the exact same. So there's also hats on the blue sprue. It's, it's the same mix. So if you don't like uh, your... Union troops also having a mix of hats and capes and also having some of them having uh, great coats or bad rolls or whatever and some of them not having that You're kind of out of luck because that's that's just kind of what you're getting in this box um, So yeah, we get 12 sprues in gray and 12 sprues in blue and this is an absolute ton of figures, I mean, just, yeah. The, the amount of stuff you get in this box, even though it's all the same frame, I still think is, is just, is a bargain. Right, what else do we get? Oh, look at that, we get some absolutely tiny, cute dice. Six of them. Not exactly a lot, but that, that's fine. I mean, we all have dice, right? So. So yeah, get some cute little red dice. Always like having small red dice for like wound counters and the like. Then we get two uh, sheets of flags, which is actually pretty great. And you know what? The quality of these is a lot better than I expected it to be. Let's see how close I can get it. I mean, that is really good. Let me actually have a really close look. I need the light for that. They're too small for me to see if it actually says the right things on the uh, um, on the what do you call it the 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 blue ones I, I forget what what those flags were called for the Union but uh, they are supposed they are supposed to be slightly different for each regiment they have a different number of stars and so on uh, but yeah we we have some some special ones here as well. So that's actually really cool. I'm, I'm definitely going to use some of these uh, just to spice up my collection because the, the first main having the yellow one and the 54th Massachusetts having that one is pretty cool, pretty neat. So yeah, the flags are actually quite good. Um, the material, it's, it's a rather thick paper. So maybe for that size of flag, not the best. I would probably prefer something a bit thinner like uh, the other flags. Uh. Like the other flags that I have <clears throat> for 10 mil. Also, by the way, I think these... No, they're about the same size. So yeah, this, these are basically 10 mil flags that you get. Interesting. But yeah, um, this material is a bit softer, a bit thinner. This is a, a very sturdy paper. Uh, not sure that's going to work out for some of these really delicate cavalry flags. You might get some issues with tearing there. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's it, you know you still get a ton of flags. Here's the uh, the Confederate sheet, and the variety is great. I'm really I'm really happy that you get all these different state flags because usually they skimp on those, and you just get the uh, the Confederate battle flag. So that's yeah, it's actually great. I'm really happy with these flags. Um, right. What else do we get? We get, and this is 
probably the reason I am going to keep this box. <laughs> uh, you get a little travel second edition black powder uh, rule book. And I have not actually bought the second edition blue powder, uh, black, blue powder, black powder book yet. So for me, this is actually kind of perfect because I, I kind of prefer these uh, small books to take to games. It's, it's so much easier to carry. And uh, you can, you know, my eyes are still good enough that I can read the small print. Um, yeah, so this is this is great. I'm really happy that they that they put in a proper uh, sort of gamer edition rule book. It's obviously not as you know nice as the the hardcover ones, but if you're taking this to games, it's just uh, it's infinitely better. All right, what else we got? We got uh. Black Powder, Epic Battles, American Civil War. I guess this is the, this is the sort of uh, rule amendments to make uh, to make Black Powder work with larger battles. Maybe. I mean, we get a lot of uh, specifically ACW battles, which is good. Battle of Green Barrier River. We got Battle of Wilson's Creek. Battle of Salem Church. Gettysburg Day 1, Gettysburg Day 2, I think that's it, in terms of battles, and then, yeah, it seems we have just some extra ACW rules, so it would be interesting because I don't actually have the, I don't have the, um, what is it called, the Glory Glory Hallelujah book for Black Powder, it would be interesting to see if these rules are basically just the rules from uh, Glory Glory Hallelujah, or if they're different can't really tell. Oh, it's interesting. There's some in uh, information here as well on, on how the armies are structured and uh, flags and, and... That's interesting, yeah. Cool. So this is this is nice, having this. It gives you an overview of the history as well. It's pretty good. I like that. So quite the useful little addition for specifically uh, American Civil War. And then lastly, we have... Ooh, some Sarissa Precision Buildings. Um, I think it's great that they put some of this in the starter set. Because, uh, you know, having having this small scale terrain, it's not something that everybody has. So having just a little bit of it to get you started is great. And you get a bunch of snake fences uh, and a farmhouse. Is that the... F yeah, so... Do you get the little outhouse building as well? Outbuilding? Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to see when I build this. But yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, other than that, the box is empty. Um, I think it's it's like especially for how I got it. Obviously, I, I got it a lot cheaper uh, than than it will be in retail. But um, for me, just for this and. Um, the figures and everything it's it, i think it's i think it's definitely a good purchase um do i still like the general idea of epic battles i'll i'll have a little I'll, we'll have a little extra section on that i suppose so at, uh, at this point i've already seen the additional figures come out uh, wave two and wave three which are the iron brigade um zwaves uh, cavalry, skirmishes, dismounted cavalry, and I think that's it. Oh yeah, and um, gun limbers and the like. There's still some other things missing that they said they would release. Uh, that's probably then going to be way four. But my problem with it is I find it a little bit expensive. Now, where the starter box, in my opinion, is an absolute bargain for that many figures. You, I paid, what did I pay? Something, something like 60-something euros, um, which is just crazy. It's, it's a great deal for that. Whoops, sorry about that. But is it still a great deal when you pay... Uh, full price and then also want to buy what is that oh yeah the, the packing uh, is it still a good price um, if you buy any of the other stuff any of the additional boxes because they are quite expensive I, I think the most egregious one to me is the dismounted cavalry I was already not particularly happy with the uh, cavalry box in general because that box has I want to say 24 figures in it 
I think so. I don't quite remember. It might be wrong. It might be 30 or something. But that box is 50 euros. It's 40 pounds, 50 something dollars and 50 something euros. That is a lot of money for what doesn't amount to a lot of cavalry because I basically if you go to Callistra, which is the same scale, uh, the metal cavalry that they sell and they have more different poses and you can get them with uh, rifles or with uh, uh, sabers in the mounted version. Uh, you pay like 24 pounds for the same amount of cavalry. I think that's that's pretty crazy. And um, to some people, resin might be uh, an advantage. To me, it's not. I vastly prefer metal. Um, but let's actually have a look at the resin figures before I totally, totally, totally trash them. Because I haven't actually looked at them yet. And um, yeah, but I'm not. A, I'm, I will say this. I, going into this, I'm not a massive fan of resin. So let's have a look. So this is Mr. Lee. And I will say the detail is pretty good. I actually have a proper look under the light myself so I can judge it a bit better. It's very difficult to see through the camera. So there's a lot of flash to clean up, uh, especially here. That's where the that's where it was poured. So there's the the vent leading into the uh, leading into the model that has to be cleaned off. Kind of a prominent position on the butt of the horse. I would have preferred that to be down here somewhere, but there's nothing down here actually. Uh, probably one of the cleanest parts of the models down here. Excellent. Uh, some more vents on top of his head. Um, where else do we have vents? There's some on the leg there, or there might be flash. A vent on his foot. So it's on, and on his arm right there. So it's not too difficult to clean this up. I would say it's as resin goes. This is actually not that bad. I'm really not a big fan of resin, but this is this is actually fine. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to complain about this too much. Uh, obviously not about these anyway because I got them I got them just for free um, yeah it's okay this one has vents on the on the bottom there and no ah, yeah, I see that the the connector where it was uh, poured is, is on the on the rump there right and then we have the upper body so it's it's a very easy assembly. Just have to clean up both of the ends and then join them together, like so, which is good. And um, I'm gonna do this because uh, I wanna I wanna see let's let's see how how bendy this this actually is. Okay, yeah, this is actually pretty bendy. So that's not not actually too bad for this kind of scale figure. Because, um, I mean, that's what I'm always worried about the most with resin, is is the snapping of uh, things like spears. But this seems to be pretty, pretty decent. I would probably still replace this, because it, it seems relatively easy to, to replace. Yeah, I guess the... Right, yeah, so you glue him on there, and then the, the thing goes... Uh, yeah, you can definitely replace this, and I, I probably will, because... Uh, it, I still don't want it to just flop around everywhere. But the quality is actually not nearly as bad as I thought it might be. So kudos for that, I suppose. I'll also show you General Mead. But uh, I'm still not entirely convinced by this, um, this, this resin extras line, because I, I still think that it is quite expensive. Um, Oh, interesting. The um, the adjutant uh, with the flag is actually a different sculpt for the. Well, I guess the upper bot. No, the whole thing is different actually because the, he has the the banner on the other side. So that's a different different model for the uh, Confederates. It's pretty good. All right, uh, for the no, actually that's yeah, that is for the um, that's for the Union. Never mind. Yeah, for the Union. Yeah, because we have General Meade. <laughs> Am I being stupid? No, that is General. No, no, this is General Lee. This is General Lee. The other one was Mead. <sighs> Whatever. And he's also pretty good, Mr. Lee. Yeah, I like it. 
Um, they're they're not bad. They're they're pretty decent. They're also I will say that the the parts that aren't super thin, like the like the banner, they're not too bendy actually. So people saying that this is a very bendy resin, I don't know that that's true. It's really just the the super thin bits that that bend but don't break. So I'm I'm actually a lot more impressed by by these than I was uh, by the plastic soldier uh, stuff, the the sort of super bendy plastic that they went with for uh, the Mortimer Glorium stuff. I, I think this is way better, and it's also a lot cleaner. There's so, so much less stuff to clean up on these. So if the actual boxes of these resin figures look more or less the same as these, they're really not that bad. They're surprisingly okay. Um, would I get any of them? I don't know. And that's, that's for me, that's the problem. Because as I said in the beginning, in the very beginning, when I was, uh, when they announced this stuff, and I made my little uh, opinion video, for me, the appeal uh, in this is that it is much easier to sell something like this to a uh, potential German audience. Uh, German audiences do enjoy games that just come ready. Right, where they just buy a bunch of boxes and, they, and everything is available from the same company. This is of course not true for all Germans, but in general the market here is very much based on that. It's, it's very sort of influenced uh, by Games Workshop over the years and uh, you know other companies like uh, Battlefront and Privateer Press. Those are the, the kind of games that tend to do well here. So people kind of expect a company to put out rules, to put out all the miniatures that are required, um, maybe even terrain, but, you know, specifically those things. And I thought that this was a good way of maybe getting people into historical, because it's one company that offers everything you need, and it's not World War II, isn't that great? But with the prices of the additional packs of figures, I, th I feel like it will be a little harder to do that now. Um, luckily, with American Civil War, you don't actually need all of those extra boxes, right? You don't you don't need an Iron Brigade. You don't need uh, Zwavs. They're cool things to have, but they're not required. Um, but things like cavalry are required and skirmishers. Uh, so that's definitely two boxes. Well, three if you want dismounted cavalry that you will have to get. And, you know, even if you just get a box of skirmishers, a box of cavalry, and a box of mounted cavalry, which will probably just, you know, give you enough stuff for one of your two armies from the starter set, that's 140 euros extra. That is a lot of money for not actually that many figures, if you think about it. Like, that's, that's really not that many. Because the especially the skirmishers and the uh, dismounted cavalry box are pretty small in terms of what you actually get. Obviously, uh, I can just go ahead and buy stuff from Callistra to fill up the rest of my army and will get away much, much cheaper. But I feel like I might have a harder time getting people into this now with how the, uh, the additional boxes have turned out in terms of, in terms of uh, prices. I'll end with the massive stack of bases. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I still haven't really decided. Um, I have sort of thought about maybe selling it off again right away. Um, but I think for now I'll just sit on it. Uh, I, I, I do have the, the uh, backlog to finish first anyway before I even consider diving into this. Um, and until then I'll, I'll make a decision about that. Um, yeah, and I, I will say when it just comes to the starter set, I think the starter set is excellent. And you can fight a good chunk of... Uh, American Civil War battles with just the starter set because a lot of those battles just didn't have or were the, the cavalry and the the other unit types they didn't they didn't do the brunt of the fighting they were obviously involved always but a lot of the fighting was done just by the infantry regiments and so in some of the battles and so there there is there is historical battles you can fight you can definitely also just fight you know non-historical battles so there's a lot of play you can get out of that starter box, and I do think that's worth it. But with the uh, additional stuff that they brought out being 
in my opinion, questionable in price, um, the question does arise, is it worth getting into the scale? Or are you better off just sticking with 10 mil or tr true 15 mil, you know, uh, Peter Pig, or the large going toward 18 mil figures, or 28 mil figures from, um, from Perry in plastics, uh, or even 6 mil, you know, that there are... I think it's I think it's a lot less of a of a cut and dry answer uh, now that they announced what else is going to be in the range and you know that most of it is going to be resin. Um, yeah, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I'm still kind of undecided as to whether or not I'm going to keep it. Uh, I do still really like the starter box, uh, and honestly, just for the just for the travel rule book, I'm kind of tempted to just keep it <laughs> even even if I never do anything with the figures that that rule book will make my life so much easier um, anyway yeah let me know guys uh, really long video I'm sorry about that I hope I hope it helps you uh, get through your painting a little bit or something but uh, other than that I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video and uh, take care bye bye